In this tutorial, we'll cover installed versus non-installed fonts, finding and filtering fonts, and font comparison. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. As discussed in previous tutorials in this series, you probably have hundreds of fonts on your computer. Some were included with iOS, others may have been added when installing other applications, and others may have come from font websites. From within Corel Draw, the Get More link has a fonts page from where you can bring in a wealth of additional fonts, some for free and some for purchase. To see what fonts I have installed on my Mac, I'll open the All Fonts folder, which shows 292 fonts. All of these fonts can be used for any application on my computer. I can select a font to preview it. In contrast, when in Corel Draw I open the text tool and open the fonts list in the property bar, I have 1611 fonts that I can use. Some of these are the ones I have installed on my Mac, but the rest are not installed. Corel Draw can access fonts that aren't installed in iOS, and these non installed fonts are available only in Corel Draw, not in any other applications. As an example, when I downloaded a set of fonts from Corel Content, these were placed in Documents, Corel, Corel Content, Fonts. Fonts is one of Corel Draw's watched folders, so any font here will appear in Corel Draw's font list, such as Hobo BT. This font doesn't appear in my iOS installed list, so I can't use this font in other programs, but I can use it in Corel Draw. This fonts folder and all folders inside it are automatically watched folders in Corel Draw, and I can use the font manager to mark other folders to watch. I'll show this in another tutorial. I could install on my Mac any of the Corel Draw only fonts if I wanted. This could be done simply by double clicking on a font, and in the window that opens, I would click Install Font. I can also do this with the font manager, which I'll cover in another tutorial. However, Having a large number of installed fonts will unnecessarily weigh down my system. The most efficient way to store fonts that I'll only be using in Corel Draw is to keep them in a folder within the Corel Content Fonts file structure. Now let's look at Corel Draw's long list of fonts. While preview is enabled, I can hover over any font to see how it looks with these default characters. I can increase the size of the font names with this slider. And if I want to find a specific font whose name I know, I can start typing the name in the font field to narrow the list. If I click Show Filter List, I can narrow my font list according to a variety of criteria. Listing only installed or protected system fonts reduces the list to those installed in iOS. Not installed shows the ones in Corel Draw's watched folders. I can also show only fonts that are editable or installable. I can also filter by font technology, weight, width, style, language, etc. Checking document fonts shows only those fonts currently in use. Font collections can be created in the font manager, which will be covered in a separate tutorial. If I download fonts from Corel, these will automatically be added as a font collection. I can clear all filters with this button. The font options icon opens a list of options that includes showing recently used fonts at the top of the list and using the font to display the font name. Show Latin names will display non-Latin font names in Latin characters. Clicking Font List Preferences opens the Program Preferences to the text page with the familiar options for display, font matching, and writing tools. Clicking Get More opens the list of font packs I can purchase or download from Corel. Now let's look at comparing fonts. In this document, I'd like to try out different fonts for the store name. I can select the text and choose different fonts from the dropdown, but say I want to compare a few fonts side by side. I'll open the Font Sampler Inspector for this. Users of previous versions of Corel Draw will recognize this inspector as the former font playground. I have four samples in this inspector now, which use standard fonts and the default lorem ipsum text. To change the fonts, I'll click each sample and set a different font. 
To add another font, I'll click Add. I can rearrange the list order by dragging and dropping. If there's a font I want to eliminate, I'll select it and click Remove. I can change the sample text size with this slider or by clicking on either letter icon. The default view is single line, and I can switch to multi-line to see the entire sample text. I have the stencil font selected, and when I switch to waterfall view, the display shows the sample text in the selected font, in different sizes, which I can adjust. If I want to compare fonts using the actual text in my document, I can edit the text, select and copy it with Command C, then paste it into the sample text bar. I could paste in text copied from another application as well. When I've chosen the font I want to use, I can select it and click the Copy button. Then I'll edit the text, delete it, and paste in the copied text. And all I have to do now is change the text color. The font sampler is also handy for comparing fonts in a font family. There are several fonts within American Typewriter. I'll add each one by one, and now it's easy to see the differences. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on installed fonts, finding and filtering fonts, and font comparison. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.